Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraven U here for another video. Um, today we're going to be playing with an idea that came from Matt H, but I kind of crafted the deck list entirely myself. Um, so here's the original prompt. I have a vague idea for a Mardu Sundial of the Infinite deck using Sundial to abuse red extra turn effects and creatures like Kroxa and Flickerwisp. I want to challenge you to make a deck around this idea. It doesn't have to specifically be Mardu, it was just an idea I had, but I want you to make a legacy deck around Sundial of the Infinite. Okay, so this was a fun idea. I kind of set out to Twitter uh, to get some general ideas, and then I started brewing. So kind of the first problem that I had with the original idea was that this deck probably needs to have art of, uh, like land-based mana acceleration. It probably needs some number of Ancient Human City of Traders if I actually want to like use Sundial of the Infinite consistently. And that means that being a Mardu deck would really mean that our mana base is like a four color deck count counting the colorless stuff. And so I decided to trim black immediately. And then I started like brewing with like Flicker Wisp and stuff and I still didn't like the mana base. So ultimately what I decided to do was try and build a mono red Sundial of the Infinite deck. And to make this work, I had to squeeze in some extra jank. I, I hope you don't mind. Let's be real, you're here, you don't mind the jank. Okay, so first of all, in case you don't know Sundial of the Infinite, this is a two-mana artifact, and for one mana, you can just end the turn. Now, you can only activate this on your turn, you don't just get to go, oh, your opponent, your turn's over, okay? So, the idea here is that I am going to be a Phyrexian Dreadnought and Eater of the Days deck. So, for one mana, I play Phyrexian Dreadnought. And instead of sacrificing 12 power worth of creatures, I'm just going to pay one mana and the turn, and it's like I have it like a stifle on the stick for that trigger. Similarly, I have Eater of Days, a 9-8 flying trampler that normally makes you skip your next two turns. Well, now it is a 5 mana 9-8 flying trampler, because I can just end the turn for one mana. So... These were kind of my creatures that I used to replace the, the Kroxa. Um, generally speaking, Kroxa has been a really bad card every time that I have tried to fit it into a deck. It's just so mana intensive, and it's not nearly as powerful and flexible as Uro is. So next up, I needed more things to support Phyrexian Dreadnought, and that meant Torpor Orb. Now this is going to be a main deck hate card for decks like Death and Taxes and Doomsday, in addition to just allowing me to play these big, dumb creatures. So now I can either play a big dumb creature via Sundial of the Infinite or Torpor Orb. I also have two different red extra turn effects. Last chance is two mana, take an extra turn. After this one, at the beginning of that turn's end step, you lose the game. We also have Final Fortune, which has the same effect. There's also a portal card that does the same thing, I think. It's like Oath of Warriors or something like that, but I couldn't actually find that on MTGO while I was looking for it. I'm not sure what was up with that. Okay, now I needed to build the rest of the deck to support this. And I wanted to play the best mana rock in Legacy, Ragavan, in order to do that. Yeah, I know, I know, Ragavan's fucking good. Like, let's move past that. Like, we're, we're building some drank. I need a couple of strong cards to support it. Cut me some slack. So we're using Ragavan here because it creates a like repeatable Lotus Petal effect so that we can get to four mana for things like Eater of Days. I also have an Urza Saga package here. Um, when I started drafting the deck, I had a few more like super cute things in here. There's a one mana artifact that you can pay two mana and blink a creature until end of turn. And I originally had that in there until I realized that you have to sacrifice the card in order to do that. Uh, apologies, I've forgotten the name of the card. Um, anyway, um, I think Urza Saga is going to be pretty good in this deck, not just because it's Urza Saga, but because it gives us a couple angles that work well towards the deck. So for example, we can play turn one Urza Saga, turn two Torpor Orb, and then on turn three, we can just Urza Saga and find a Dreadnought. And the constructs from this are also just going to pay us off for playing cards like Sundial of the Infinite and Torpor Orb that are just going to sit on the battle and have some effect on the game. And kind of the artifact sitting on the battlefield sub-theme is why I am playing Karn in the first place. The other thing that the Urza Saga does is it allows us to come back from the beginning of the game where we just get absolutely pounded. It lets us search up Shadow Spear. 
and if we gain 12 or even just 9 life off a, a, a lifelink activation, um, that's probably getting us out of the range of most Delver openers. As far as the sideboard goes here, I didn't get too cute in any one direction. Um, one of the drafts of this deck had Karn the Great Creator instead of Karn Scion of Urza, so that I could put like a Sundial of the Infinite, a Torpor Orb, and an Eater of the Days in, sorry, Eater of Days in the sideboard. Um, but ultimately, I decided I needed just more solid stuff in the main deck, more things that were just likely to win the game on their own. Um, so I went away from that direction. Sideboard has Ley Lines, Relic, Grafdigger's Cage for Graveyard Hate, Thorns as generic combo hate. Although honestly, Thorn isn't as good as it used to be now that like Doomsday is a thing, but hopefully our Torpor Orbs cover that. And then for matchups where my artifacts are likely to die, I decided to play a couple of Spell Skites. It's just another artifact that can sit off the bat sit on the battlefield. It can be played off of Ancient Tombs or Mox, Mox Opals early and protect my janky stuff. One thing that didn't make it into the final version of the deck that I thought was cute is when I was playing the Karn, the Great Creator version, it had, um, oh my gosh, uh, the imprint card, Isochron Scepter, there we go, one, one for two on old cards that I had forgotten. Um, it was playing Isochron Scepter, so we could put that, put a last chance under it, and then take infinite turns by ending the extra turn uh, via Sundial of the Infinite before we lost. But ultimately, I decided that was too cute and too many moving parts. All right, um, I'm excited to give this one a go. Um, note, I am probably playing one land too many. This should probably be a 21 land deck. But I think I don't want to mulligan too much with this deck if possible. And so I'm playing one more land than I think I should. Uh, it's possible I could just slot in like a Final Fortune or some other banger of some kind, some big haymaker. Um, but I wanted to err on the side of playing too much land. Um, okay, all right, one more cute interaction in the deck deck. Sundial of the Infinite can also be used to save my City of Traders. So normally City of Traders uh, gets sacrificed when you play it, uh, but if we have Sundial of the Infinite, we can play our other land and then just end our turn, and uh, yeah, that'll, that'll save our City of Traders from dying, which is pretty cute. Anyway, I hope you all will enjoy this video. Uh, please consider throwing me a like before we get started. It is the easiest way to support my content for free, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you end up wanting to try out this deck list, the deck list is available in the video description, as is my donation information if you have a sweet idea you want to see on stream. All right, let's go for the brew trophy. Go for a 3-2 with this deck. All right, my opponent has revealed a Yorian, so we are probably once again playing against death and taxes. Um, my hand doesn't really do anything. Like, I play Urza Saga on one, and then a Retrofitter Foundry. Um... I think given how powerful a Torpor Orb hand is, I'm just supposed to mulligan this. How do I feel about the Ragavan hand? Probably okay with the Ragavan hand. I'll keep this, pitch the Eater of Days, and then I can work towards doing Urza's Saga-based shenanigans pretty quickly. My opponent doesn't have a Swords to Plowshares. I get to just get in with the Ragavan on turn one. Okay. We have dodged that bullet. The Eater of Days came back. Well, would you look at that? So let's crash in with my monkey friend. I assume is getting in at this point because my opponent didn't. Okay, they just let me draw more cards before removing it. Guess that occurs. Now I'll go Urza Saga. We'll play my Retrofitter Foundry. And then I'll hold Lightning Bolt up for something like a Stoneforge Mystic. I really wanted that Ragavan to connect because I was planning on using that mana fuck to activate an Urza Saga. Um, this is sort of disastrous. Yep, that that would uh, that would qualify as the worst case scenario. Okay, at least I drew a land. Um, but I I am absolutely on the back foot here. Like Mulligan plus my mana accelerator being removed plus my other threat being removed while also killing a land. Uh, overall is just a very poor combination for me. I also kind of need to like put the pedal to the metal in terms of closing this game, because as that vial ticks up and things like Flicker Wisps and uh, Skyclave Apparitions become live, uh, my opponent can really bully me. Okay, you got your land drop. A little surprising that my opponent doesn't have any two drop play. And just uh, I can just play an Eater of Days, give my opponent two turns. What's the worst that could happen? I can I can think of a few things. I don't I don't think I'm supposed to do that. 
All right, so let's attempt to attack in with this servo. Looks like it's working fine. And I'll have a lightning bolt available for a mom. Need a sundial or a torpor orb. Okay, no, uh, no two drop from my opponent, which probably means no two drop coming in off of Vile this turn unless they play something like a recruiter. Okay, just more land. I think I'm going to value going wide here in case I actually do get to make some constructs rather than trying to create one four four. Uh, it's just another eater of days. Okay, am I fine just attacking into the vial on two? I think so. Because I both have a lightning bolt and the ability to just retrofit or foundry away this servo. Okay, so no blocks. They'll take two, go to 17. And I don't think they're going to have anything for the vial here. Oh, I'm wrong. So this was their draw four turn then. Yeah, you can you can stoneforge for your cauldra. I'll lightning bolt your idiot. Oh, they're going for a jete. Um, I am not going to take the risk that they just like have cauldra or batter skull in hand currently. Gives me a little less flexibility later, but I think I'm okay with it. All right, more land. Okay, there's the jete. Things start getting a little weird here. I think I'm going to go ahead and make a flyer now. I want to be able to hold back some creatures so that my opponent can't get Jete counters easily. All right, just uh, cannot draw one of my eight enablers. Once I do so, it's pretty hot. Um, I'm just going to hold back both of these creatures. Um, currently, I'm kind of banking on being able to play a defensive game versus this Jete for a couple of turns, and then just ending the game in one shot. Uh, that's annoying. I want to make a 4-4, four four, or do I want to make something that can block and trade with the Flicker Wisp? I think I want to make something that, I, that can block and trade with the Flicker Wisp. Try to keep my opponent from repeatedly getting Jete counters, like force them to have another creature. If the vial goes up to four, working towards Yorian, or if it just stays at three, I think I'm more scared of it at three. Yeah, they're going to four. Okay, um, that's annoying. Although my opponent may or may not end up using it, because their line this turn is probably put Jete on this Flicker Wisp, followed by put Yori into hand for next turn. All right, so Flicker Wisp comes in. I will sacrifice my servo. Okay, I mean, if they've got it, they've got it. That means they get to keep the Flicker Wisp around, unfortunately. I'm going to go to 20. They get their two Jete counters. If my Ancient Tomb gets locked down... I'm actually kind of in trouble, honestly. Looks like they're going to wait a turn to try and grab the Yorian. Oh, my opponent just let me. Huh, that's super weird. Um, yeah, the Ragavan doesn't do anything in the face of the active Jitte counters. Yeah, so my opponent had uh, Flicker Wisp plus Swords of Postures to get rid of my, both of my creatures. That could stop that. Um, so unfortunately, now I just have to chill. Why, why aren't you fucking end of turn porting me? All right, it's fine. Sure. I assume I only take three this turn. Correct. My Eater of Days still absolutely outclasses a Flicker Wisp. Okay, so Yorian is going to hand. Um, opponent not opting to use it immediately. They had some very good lines where they used it. Um, I think I forgot to activate a Retrofitter Foundry, by the way. Okay, so here's the Vial activation. There's Yorian. I'm very surprised they didn't opt to reset their ether vial there. Um, unless they have a Caracas, resetting the ether vial is probably pretty legit. Okay, there's an Urza Saga. We'll see how much damage my opponent opts to do to me here. Um, I believe if they just like go in and pump with the Flicker Wisp, they shut off my ability to actually tap this Ancient Tomb. All right, six Jitte counters. Yeah, so they could have put me to two, and then I can't tap this Ancient Tomb. So I'm going to make a 1-1 one, one here. It is not worth my life for me to untap this. What the fuck are you doing with your Rashadden port? <sighs> I have no ability to punish what's going on on the other side of the battlefield, unfortunately. I just have four dead cards in hand. 
Alright. Next game. Um, about the only thing I can consider boarding in is Spellskite here. Assuming that my opponent at some point actually activates a Rashadon port. I think these cards are very hard to use. I'm going to board in some Spellskites. I guess I have to keep one of these. We want the white border one or the black border one. I think the white border one for tilt-based reasons is probably better. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, um, this is an opening hand that does nothing. I just have to throw it back. Is it, is it just, like, too much to ask to open up on one of my enablers? Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. What's going back? It's probably just the Karn, and I lean on the Urza's Sagas as my finisher here. I have not drawn a Sundial yet um, at all. Or a Torpor Orb, for that matter. Okay. Um, so this is only two artifacts, so this is not live yet. It'll be live next turn. I believe it is correct to just play Ragavan on one rather than start on an Urza Saga. Classic. I, I guess I have some cute stuff here. So I'll go Urza Saga. I will use Urza Saga to play a Pithing Needle. My opponent can now respond by activating their Caracas. Or not. I don't even need to get cute here. Alright. I was gonna dash, but I guess I can just keep this Ragavan in play. <laughs> okay. Alright. Um, a little frustrating. I mean, hopefully opponent doesn't have Wasteland now and I just get to run away with this one via Constructs. Okay, opponent has an Urza Saga of their own. Into a Thalia. That's fine. All right, uh, a new Ragavan. That's not doing anything immediately for me. I will still play it. You are live, right? One, two, three. Yeah, you are live. So I'll just cast this. And then I am going to have a handful of very large Urza Saga construct tokens. They will be much larger than my opponent's. My opponent also theoretically might need to use their Caracas to bounce this Ragavan at some point. Sure, my stuff is colorless currently. Um, no, you just locked yourself out of casting an Aether Vial. Um, yep, that is a thing that occurred. I will make a big ol' construct, and I will repeat that process a few times. What's my feeling about this lightning bolt? I think I'm just ignoring its existence. Yeah, I think I'm just ignoring its existence. It can go to the dome later. So I'll just make a new construct, and I think I want the Shadow Spear. I go ahead and bash in for six, and my opponent just takes that. So now I have 12 power in play, soon to be much, much, much more. I have a Lightning Bolt. Okay. I have a Lightning Bolt that can go to Dome. My opponent didn't have a Pithing Needle for my own Urza Saga to keep me from getting another Construct. My opponent got no Constructs out of theirs. Pithing Needle shuts off like Thalia Caracas Bounce shenanigans. Okay, there's the Aether Vial. They could have played that last turn instead of playing Mom. And filed in Mom this turn. That's not where we're at. Really though, I, I did put Torpor Orbs and uh, Uzi What's It in my deck, right? I believe I did. Oh, oh, my pith, my pithing needle is already in play. That's why I'm confused. All right, so there's a retrofitter foundry. Let's go ahead and attack with both of these. I assume I get a chump block via mom over Thalia. I, I don't know. It kind of depends on what my opponent has. Yeah, mom does not appear to have a lot of uh, utility at this time. Um, what this means in actuality is that I probably just get to Lightning Bolt my opponent's final blocker next turn, and then they die. Um, I'm expecting a concession right here. We'll see. Things can happen. Like, my opponent could have Flicker Wisp plus another Mother of Runes, for example. Okay, yeah, there's a Flicker Wisp. That gets rid of one. And we'll see what I draw here. An Ancient Tomb. Uh, the Trample here alone probably just does it. Uh, you, you, go ahead and equip you here. I guess there's also Solitude. 
What do I want dead? Do I want this Flicker Wisp dead or do I want this Thalia dead? I want this Thalia dead so Ragavan can attack in as well. Goodbye, Thalia. Send him. Okay, that's just the concession. Um, I don't really have any sideboard options here. Uh, really, though, like, can I draw a Torpor Orb or a Sundial Infinite so I can try to do the things that my deck is designed to do? <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, well, so this is technically what I asked for. Torpor Orb's good. I don't think it's this good. I believe I am keeping this. We're back Lightning Bolt. Go oh, Great Furnace, Retrofitter, Foundry, Mox, Opal, Ragavan on turn one. And then on turn two, if Ragavan connects, I have Torpor Orb plus Spyrexian Dreadnought. I think that's correct. The, the Lightning Bolt is obviously quite good in the matchup, but I think I just need to play towards my highest potential like EV line. Another Torpor Orb. Sure. Great Furnace. Retrofitter Foundry. Mox Opal. Red Mana. Ragavan. We have dodged Swords to Plowshares at the very least as a starting point. Okay, there's another land from my opponent. Oh, baby. I am going to start by playing this Torpor Orb before I do anything else. I just want to know if I am playing around Solitude preemptively. Like, if, if my opponent is going to Solitude, I want them to Solitude Ragavan, not this Dreadnought that I'm about to play. So now I'm going to give them a chance to Swords to Plowshares Ragavan. Okay, there we go. Mission accomplished. Now that Source of Plowshares has been used, here's my fucking 12-12. Oh, yeah. Baited. All right, there's a third lander up from the opponent. They can do a Skyclave. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, what about a Solitude? Aw. Oh, shame. Stoneforge? Hmm. Mm, nope, nope, nope. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this a lot. Okay, that is, uh, that is just a 3-1. Does not line up well versus my 12-12. See if they drew something like a Path to Exile for turn. Oh, that is soaking up one damage. Oof. All right, um, I will play an Urza Saga. I will play another Torpor Orb, just in case there's some sort of disenchant effect. Um, what is it? Like a, I think it's Cathar Commando is the name of the like three one flash thing. That's not an ETB. Yeah, you can wasteland my Urza Saga. I don't think that's saving you from everything else that's going on here. All right, and we get the concession. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, yeah, GG. The fucking Torpor Orb, man. Good card. Okay, um, round two opening hand is a little weird. I have a Ragavan, I have a Sundial, I have a Karn. I have the ability to turn on this Mox Topal Opal on turn two. I am not sure if this is a keep. If this Ragavan doesn't get answered, this hand is quite good. And if the Ragavan does get answered, the hand's quite bad. I think I'm going to try to find something safer. Yeah, I like this combination of cards better. I don't have the red red right now for last chance sundial. So I think I put that on bottom. Despite the fact that I really want to do that. <laughs> that's that's on the bing bingo board of things to accomplish this league. But with my second land being Urza's Saga, um, if I if this Ragavan gets answered so I'm not getting Lotus Petals, um, it just doesn't do anything. Okay. Let's see if Ragavan connects as my starting point. Get in there, little buddy. Oh, baby. It does. All right. This revealed a flooded strand. So I will play my land. And right now, I think Torpor Orb is potentially better than the Sundial without shenanigans to abuse right now. Um, there is a thing that can happen where my opponent just plays like an Uro or something on turn three. Yeah, Baleful Strix, that's fine. That doesn't draw a card. Um, I'm not going to play around Force of Negation. I don't know how I'm going to want to use this Lotus Petal. Yeah, so let's just Lightning Bolt this out of the way. I'll bash in with Ragavan. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Uh, 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 uh. Fuck. I'm immediately realizing that I should have put fucking Fury in this deck. Holy shit. Uh. Fuck. Okay. Uh. Uh. Alright, so my opponent held back Endurance to play around Dash Ragavan. I am going to go ahead and make my Construct here. And, oh, I don't know. What are we looking for here, Bob? Is it a 12-12? Gee, I don't know, Phil. Is that even good? Maybe. We're gonna do it. <laughs> uh, um, real talk, though. It's very possible that I should just um, be getting a box in that situation so that I can actually um, deploy cards in a meaningful way. Yeah, we can just draw one, too. All right. You have evolved to a 5-5, five five. and now I'll turn you into a 6-6. Six six. And this will be the point that I will turn creatures sideways with a righteous fury. Get in there, my artifact friends. 18 incoming damage on turn 5. 5 incoming damage on turn 5. Uh, which honestly is still pretty good. I'm also just set up to, like, play Karn or Eater of Days and do disgusting things afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah all right. So the Tarper Orbs are scary against this deck is, is basically what I'm uh, fucking feeling right now. All right, um... <laughs> okay, got him at 29 life. Yeah, this, this one's not over yet. We'll see if my... All right, so my opponent is going for an Uro attack this turn. That's fine, because I hit in just absolutely stupid large chunks of damage. So, like, even though I'm taking a hit for 6 here and my opponent is gaining extra life, I don't know how much it actually matters. Okay, so now do I play the Eater of Days, or do I just play a Karn? If my opponent has an Abrupt Decay and I play the Eater of Days, it fucking sucks. But... In the world where they don't have exactly that card, I want to play this because this plays around Force of Negation, whereas Karn doesn't. Okay, they're fetching. So that probably means Hardcast Force of Will. All right, Tundra. Yeah, yep, it's looking like Hardcast Force of Will. That's fine. Uh, do I want to crash in for five? I do. I, I am still the beat down here, despite the fact that my opponent has more power on board currently. I just need to whack with another set of constructs, and then I will outpace my opponent. Yeah, like my opponent is leaving back the endurance here potentially as a jump blocker. Oh no, they're not. <clears throat> so they'll go to twelve. I'll take nine. I'm not going to be in lethal damage range next turn from them. Okay. Um, that still death touches, and I really wish I had one more mana. Then I could play Sundial plus Urza's Saga activate. It's fine. I'm going to get a Shadow Spear another turn or so down the line. And then I can come back from my life deficit. I don't think I block the Uro, by the way. Like, taking that body out of play is appealing, but my opponent will be able to redeploy it. And I don't think I care too much about my opponent drawing the extra cards, oddly enough. Like, there's going to be some Source of Plowshares, Prismatic Ending, Abrupt Decay type cards that I'm going to be a little bit scared of. Um, that is annoying, though. That means I don't get the Shadow Spear that I was planning on using to kind of stabilize from this situation. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Uh, just like that, things have turned around. My own fucking Torpor Orb betrayed me. Um, yeah, I can dash a Ragavan, but that doesn't actually get me anywhere here. Like, even if I hit Swords to Plowshares off my opponent's deck, I still take four, because we'll bounce back to my hand. Alright, GG's. But oh my god, I should have put Fury in this deck. I would, ha I would have to have more red cards to do it, I think. Hmm, okay. Do I have options? I probably need to play something that helps me answer Uro. I'm boarding out my extra turn effects here. Or blasts. I think that's what I'm doing. I really want to just like make a couple of constructs, take an extra turn, and just murder someone. It's on the bucket list, but I, I think Uro is just so scary, and so is Dress Down, that I just have to have the ability to uh to stop that stuff. 
All right. So this goes Mountain Mox Ragavan. Or actually, I'll probably wait to play that. No, if my pot has prismatic ending, they prismatic ending Ragavan. It goes Mountain Mox Ragavan and works towards Sundial Eater of Days. That's fine. Sundial is probably just better than um, Torpor Orb in this matchup specifically, since my opponent has a handful of ways of like abusing my own Torpor Orb. Okay, that's not a land that kills Ragavan. So let's end in with combat with our little buddy. Okay. Um, apparently I was wrong. All right. Um, let's go land. I have to take two damage here to do this. The so next turn, I have Eater of Days if I can turn on Mox Opal, because I'll have four mana, five mana. Um, but I need one other artifact in play. Um, yeah, actually, there's not a handful of things that I that can just get me to metal craft without paying mana. Um, I could draw the red artifact land though. That would uh, that would do it. What did that ponder do? No shuffle on the ponder. Still got all these sundials. That's fine. Next turn, I will uh, I will actually have my eater of days now. Okay, so this is, you know, about Uro time for my opponent. They could also have something like a Teferi. They're in a bunch of colors, honestly. They could have a lot of things. Yep, that was one of the ones that I was literally about to say. Chris just destroys a creature. Fuck. So much for dodging a bunch of my opponent's removal. Ugh. Well, do I play the Torpor Orb? Since I have a Sundial, I don't know that I do. Okay, I think I'm dead. I just don't think I can beat this Grist. Like, I can try to wiggle myself into a spot where I, like, maybe get to Lightning Bolt and Insect and then, like, play the Eater of Days, kill Grist, or I can draw a second Lightning Bolt. Um, it's not good. And any further interaction my opponent has in their six-card hand uh, complicates matters further. I guess I have a Pithing Needle that I could get off an Urza Saga. That's... That's something that... And do serious work. Yeah, I'll I'll take one off the insects. We're gonna we're gonna chill with this lightning bolt. All right. I mean, we'll play this out. If I play another land, I can end the turn later. That's not gonna be an issue. I don't have to lose this city of traders. I don't want to. All right. Ponder away. Um, this time it is a shuffle. Um. Previously, my opponent had kind of like used Grist to clear the bad cards off the top of their library. All right, I'm down to 13. Okay, uh, that is double Lightning Bolt. I think I just am supposed to double Lightning Bolt this right now, rather than wait. If I wait, they gain access to hard cast force. Oh my god, we killed the Grist. That means I can Legend Rule this Mox Opal and play an Eater of Days. All right, baby, we're still in this. Oh, yeah. End the turn. <laughs> oh, that's satisfying. Especially after thinking I was just like stone cold dead to Grist. What the fuck was that? Seeds of Innocence. Destroy all artifacts. They can't be regenerated. The controller of those artifacts gains life equal to its mana. So, Phil, what bullshit card did you lose to today? Seeds of Innocence. What? Me too, man. Me too. Um, play Torpor Orb? I don't think I do yet. These insects are going to peck me to death, though. Like, three damage in play is a Delver worth of damage when you don't have any blockers around. So I'll go to 13. What's... Okay, yep. So we dodged a bullet by not playing out Torpor Orb. That's good for me. I probably have to play it this turn so my opponent doesn't gain extra life and draw extra cards off the off the Uro coming into play. Um, but this isn't the this is obviously is not the best for me. Seeds of Innocence just absolutely savaged me. Like my opponent has like that in addition to dress down as ways to deal with Urza Saga construct tokens. I'm not sure if this is actually good, but boy did it just absolutely turn that game around. If this deck has issues with like the like, blue artifact deck. I can see that, like, absolutely being a reasonable card. So I am probably eff 
effectively dead if I don't draw something here. Not literally, but I take 9, go to 1, and then I can't tap Ancient Tomb anymore. Or this other Ancient Tomb. Uh, just... What a blowout from Seeds of Innocence. Um... Like, I guess I can... No, and Eater of Days doesn't do it anymore. Like, I can play it and it stops the Uro, but then I just die to the Insect Tokens. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything that deals with four creatures simultaneously. Hold on. No, I'm so close! Because I can play Phyrexian Dreadnought, equip it with Shadow Spear, and then my opponent has lethal in the air. Fuck. Um, gonna... I'm gonna see if they miss flying lethal. Because that's my out here. <sighs> I'm still just like absolutely flabbergasted by my my opponent's card choice. Like, <laughs> all right, you you got me. GG's, just just awesome. GG's. I'll 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 let you take me to a negative life total here. You've you've earned it, friend. This side kind of has three pieces of the same combo, right? Like, this is Dreadnought, Eater of Days, plus this represents another Dreadnought. Um, I think I'm better off mulliganing this hand than to try to just keep a hand that goes to Urza Saga into City of Traitors. This hand is kind of whatever. It has Ragavan and backup Ragavan, so I think I have to keep this, but that's a little dicey on the draw. All right, Chromox. Uh... Yeah, just like, just like play a Blood Moon for me. Oh, oh, oh yeah, just fucking Blood Moon me. Blood Moon me. Yeah. Blood Sun is actively good for me. It means that if I draw a uh, city... Okay, I, I don't need the third Ragavan. Anyway, it means that if I draw a city of traitors, I never have to worry about it leaving. Um, I think I'm favored from this position, but it's kind of close. Um, will I trade Ragavan for Rabble Master? I'm going to attack with one, and I'm going to put that decision on my opponent and see how they feel about it. <laughs> that was a quick block. Absolutely no thought given to that. Just get that out of the way. I have another one. I have a lot of mana sources to draw. Um, and I have extremely good cards once I do draw mana sources. This deck is going to have... An exceptional amount of trouble dealing with an Eater of Days. Hmm. Okay. Alright. Ow. 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 I need to do things that work towards my opponent taking a lot of damage off their Ancient Tombs so that I can just finish my opponent off with a couple of Lightning Bolts. So I think I need to make it so this Ragavan can potentially attack in next turn. Okay. What do you got? A Chandra Torch of Defiance, killing my Ragavan would be a little annoying here. A card in the Great Creator also would be a bit of a kick in the pants. Okay, it is straight up just a spirit guide. I am one mana short of starting to do Eater of Days. Um, they're not super good right now anyway, though. Do I want to get this spirit guide out of the way? I don't think I do. All right. Okay, the part I said about the blood sun being good for me, that was a fucking lie. Okay, my opponent's got something else going on now. Okay. I mean, there's a last chance. That's legitimately intriguing if I draw a sundial. Do I have any artifact removal in this deck? Nope. Nope, that was, that was not something I thought to include. Alright. Well, I'm um, just... Ooh. Alright, alright. Like, a lightning bolt to get this out of the way, followed by a sundial. Would be beyond clutch. Opponent can't tap that. That costs you an Ancient Tomb activation. What, literally whatever it is. Yeah. Okay, Chalice on 1 is not that big of a deal. I have very few... One drops remaining in my deck. And now I can't use this to turn on the Mox Opal. Okay, my my opponent has not drawn more lands. Oh god. Just comic draw order here. 
I respect the universe's sense of humor. Okay, this is now bad for me, because my opponent can now start playing three drops without um, hurting their life total. Oh. Yeah, and now the Ancient Tomb no longer hurts them either. Um, can I win this game? I can't get Retrofitter into, into play off Urza Saga. I don't think I can realistically win this game. Rather than show my opponent more of my cards, I think I'm going to go ahead and concede here. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and concede here. All right, what do I have for this deck? I wish I had even just, like, one artifact removal spell. I don't. I might be running back the game 175. I like the final fortunes and last chances here, because I just make a large construct, crash in, play it, win. Bellskite is about the only thing that I think I could realistically play. My opponent might have some abrades. But I like most of the things that are here. I think I'm just going to run back the main deck 60 and hope things work out. Yes. <laughs> this is fine. So I always play Mox Opal. I think I am just going to play Sundial on turn one. Like, there is an argument to play this Urza Saga first, but I don't want to just get, like, Blood Mooned or Equivalent on turn one and then just, like, absolutely lose out on my first land drop. Alice on one. Ugh. All right. I'll play an Urza Saga. Can't use this mana yet, so I don't actually have four mana this turn. In a vacuum, I don't particularly think Chalice is great against me, but in this specific context, it definitely was. Please don't moon me. <sighs> to be fair, that is not a moon. That is a sun. Okay. Okay. Everything is fine now. I will take a absolute metric crap ton of damage from my own stuff, but things are okay. All right, you've got your land drop. Better than my ancient tombs currently by quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. Luckily, I don't have like a torpor orb in play, so that thing just, just sticks around. Ooh, this hits planeswalkers too. Nice. That means I can't just immediately minus to just make a new construct. Do you have a Rabble Master or another haste follow-up? No, you do not. Oh. Oh. Okay. Do I want a 3-3 three, three, or do I want to try to keep this Karn alive? I think I want to try to keep the Karn alive. Okay, so I kind of hit two bricks there. I hit two one-drops. The Karn's going to go down to one loyalty. I can keep plussing it for a little while and then hope to just, like, get something else. I kind of have <laughs> another one-drop. All right, maybe Chalice is better against me than I gave it credit for. Don't I only have, like, 12 one-drops? Okay, I do have 15 one-drops. Okay. Yeah, I guess Chalice is fine against me. Oh, that's unfortunate. Now I lose the Karn here. Yep. Goodbye, sweet Karn. I knew thee well. Um, yeah, looking for basically Eater of Days. Another Karn is fine as well. I don't have too much time before, like, my opponent is just going to top deck something like that. Um, so they're going to immediately minus. They can't play whatever they get this turn. They'll probably just go for... Nope, nope, nope. Finishing my thought, they'll probably just go for Mycosynth Lattice because that just kills me next turn. Um, all right, that's another Sundial of the Infinite. So they just minus, get Mycosynth Lattice, and I am dead. Okay, yeah. Uh, so deck building error, we need answers to artifacts. Now we know. All right, uh, we're probably playing against the Ruby Storm deck or whatever you're calling it these days. Um, this is a turn three at nine, eight. While that's fine, I think I would rather have something that does something before that. Now this hand doesn't really do anything. I'm going to go to five. This hand has a turn three, 12, 12. That's fine. I can throw back last chance and Karn. Again, these last chance effects are a little hard to cast. Well, actually, I can probably just throw back Torpor Orb, Karn, and then keep the last chance. And if I draw a red mana source, just win with it. All right, so I threw those two back. Um, now, which turn do I play Urza Saga on? Do I play it on one? Oh, I think I do. I think I play it on one. Torpor Orb on two. On turn three, I float mana with it. 
get a Mox, play Dreadnought off the Urza's Saga mana, then last, and have access to last chance. Yeah, I'm good with that. Gets a little weird if my opponent, like, echoes, though, in which case I will probably wish that I had just played out the mountain. I want under there. The Shatter Skull Pass, that's fine. All right. I, I will F6. Like, you, you just get to try and do your thing. I, I don't get much of a say in that. Black mana. Oh, okay. It's just a, a random color, essentially. That's fine. Okay, LED. Yep. I mean, you got an Echo. Oh, okay. It's a Galvanic Relay to set up for next turn. Sure. All right. So I will go Land, Corpor Orb. I'll play my Mox out. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the one extra mana I need for Pyrexian Dreadnought. There's also a world where my opponent does some amount of damage to themselves. And then I just do gross things. Ooh, so now I can just get a new Dreadnought, right? If I get a new Dreadnought, that turns on Metalcraft. I play a second Dreadnought, and then I play Last Chance Attack for 24. I, I kill next turn. Well, it, it's more like next turn. Um, so we'll see if my opponent can instead kill me this turn. Uh, this is this is a turn three, or I guess turn three point five goldfish. Okay. Um, so my opponent's going for black mana here. They're gonna burning wish. Uh, do they have the thing that yeah draws half their library? Peer into the abyss. That's pretty good. I assume that just kills me. I don't know how exactly. Um, but I assume that I am going to eat a Grape Shot or a Tendrils, just kind of depending on where things are at. Okay, sure, yeah, you can Thought Seize me. All right, I lose my Dreadnought. I'm just kind of preemptively thinking about my sideboarding here. I basically probably just have Thorns. All right, yeah, there's a there's a Tendrils. That, that kills me. I will concede to that. GG. Yeah. So I, I will probably just go like four thorns, four four lightning bolts. It means my Karns are a little harder to cast than I would like them to be. Um, I think ley lines are medium. I don't know that they're good enough to actually board in. Yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna go with the thorns, and I need to either mulligan to a thorn or keep a hand that has an extremely fast goldfish. Like I, I think a turn three goldfish is probably acceptable like what we had. Obviously, we didn't win with that one, but that was pretty good. And I definitely like the final fortunes and last chances here, because my opponent's not really going to have instant speed interaction. If I just have like a lethal artifact thing in play, I can just cast that. Um, I will say that with the thorns here, I, I will potentially run into some issues where I make my stuff too expensive for me to cast. And I don't know what my opponent's deck list currently looks like, but there are some things like, say, Bergy that can mitigate the power of something like a Thorn of Amethyst quite a bit. Yeah, let's get rid of this. Okay, what do we got? I cannot get a Ragavan on turn one. I can set up a turn three Dreadnought with this, but I don't know that that's good. Uh, this, is, this is basically the same hand, but worse. Oh, God. Uh, I mean, this this hand does Stone Cold nothing. I'll go to four. I mean, on on four, do I just keep the Ragavan hand? This hand's very bad. I think on four I keep the Ragavan hand. Um, but that was that was just a super disappointing set of draws. Didn't see a Thorn. Didn't see a fast Goldfish hand. And on on three cards, it's extremely hard for me to keep three cards that are going to do something good. It has to basically be like Ancient Tomb, Torpor Orb, Dreadnought, or something like that. Now, we also might just get turn one. It was irrelevant anyway. Okay, sure, sure, sure. All right, opponent's up to four mana. Oh, they're going for a gamble based line. So does that just mean an Echo? Yeah, okay. So they are Entombing for Echo. They'll cast Echo. We're not necessarily dead here. Um, this, in fact, is potentially actively good for me. There's a lot of times where I will die to an Echo, because my opponent has a lot of floating mana. Um, uh, yeah, actually, this hand is not great. I can produce a Dreadnought, 
but I think on seven cards, my opponent is pretty likely to kill me next turn if they don't kill me this turn. Oh, they're going to straight up go for another Echo. All right. Yep. There it is again. Um, so they had access to Galvanic Relay and we're not willing to Galvanic Relay yet. Um, I find that a little bit interesting because that card is good. I guess they're just convinced that they can kill me this turn. Oh, okay. They straight up have a wish. Um, that's wish for tendrils and I die. Um, GG's. Uh, we are not nearly as well suited to uh, finishing this off as a uh, traditional uh, deck of this nature would be because we don't have chalices in game one and we don't have card in the great creator. All right. Um, final round opening hand is just light on mana. I need another mana source in order for this deck to do the things that it needs to do. Uh, it just has to go back. There's all of the mana sources in the world. How do I feel about this as an Urza Saga hand? I think I have to keep this one. Throw back the redundant Mox Opal. The hand is not great, but it plays enough artifacts out that these constructs are of a scary enough size that, like, it's just, it's, 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 it's acceptable, basically. I have stone cold nothing if my opponent plays a Wasteland, though. Okay, that's not a Wasteland. But that's probably... Okay, we are playing a pseudo mirror here. I have a lightning bolt for this Emery. Uh, the question just becomes, like, do I lightning bolt this turn? I think I'm just supposed to play an Urza Saga this turn and let my opponent activate Emery once. Oh, wait. No, I can, I can just main phase it. I'll main phase activate this, turn on Metalcraft, and lightning bolt the Emery. Now I just need to find a Torpor Orb or a Sundial so I can get this Dreadnought out of my hand and onto the battlefield. I also might just be able to win this one via Constructs, although if my opponent has their own Urza Saga for blockers, that becomes a little less likely. Oh, I can just Pithy Needle their Urza Saga, though. Ooh. All right, we've already encountered the fact that that card is good against me. Uh, this last chance is nuts. Do I make my Construct? I'll just Pithy Needle their Urza Saga and intend on killing them with Last Chance. I think that's better than going for the Shadow Spear. All right, the Urza Saga is off. I play this. Uh, hold on, just quick check to make sure I can't kill my opponent. I hit them for 15, and I can really only hit them for 12. Yeah, okay. So I, I will kill them next turn with Last Chance. Get in there, Construct Friend. Uh, opponent is under a lot of pressure. Actually, I, I don't even need the last chance to kill them, right? Like, I just kill them with my next attack. Okay, you've got, you've got mana. I guess I'm afraid of, like, an ensnaring bridge. Okay, I mean, that can be a few blockers. Okay, that's the thought cast. Ooh, are we setting up for a last chance win? Feels like a last chance win. Yup, it is. It absolutely is. Okay. So I, I guess I get to swing with this too, right? Because if my opponent blocks it, um, they just die to the other things. Yep, that's fine. So I will make a Thopter so my opponent takes one more damage. And then, there's absolutely no valid reason to cast this spell. Like, I can just wait a turn for my opponent to die. But, you know, scoreboard, we have, we have won a game with last chance. Okay, I am probably going to play my Blasts. They're just good against most of the things my opponent does. I hope my opponent boards out their Chalices. But as we learned, I don't have answers to those things. And I guess I'm going to do this. So the, the easy thing to do is just do that. That's, that's the thing that just kind of innately makes sense to me. Do I want to board anything else? I think I need to keep all my haymakers. I think I need to keep all my enablers and combo pieces. I could consider doing something like a relic or a Grafter's Cage to hate on Psy Recursion. But I don't think I care about the Psy Recursion that much. Like, obviously it's good and all, but Psy Recursion does not stop 9 power in the air. Okay, what am I looking at? I do not have enough mana with this hand. I can't turn on this Mox Opal. I have the right cards, but just not things in the right proportions. Great Furnace, Mox Opal, Shadow Sphere, into Ancient Tomb, Karn. 
yeah, I'm going to keep this and throw back my Eater of Days and just plan on trying to bury my opponent in Karnstruck tokens. Um, my hand's a little fragile, though. Okay, there's there's an Emery. Uh, just completely whiffing, though. Torpor Orb. Want to play that on turn one? Stops future Emery's from doing things. Take two more damage. Yeah, I, I think I'll go ahead and play it. All right. Corporal Orb's in play, Mox Opal's in play, my artifact count is 2 though, so I can't dump the Shadow Spear into play. Corporal Orb stopping Emery from triggering in the first place is kind of cool. Okay, there's a Thought Cast, and my opponent can, like, sack their- okay, they found- they found a Bobble, so they can start drawing cards that way. That's legit. If they didn't find a Bobble, they could just, like, use their Lotus Petal. Um, but they did not have to take that route. Okay, yeah, they're just going to immediately cycle that one as well. And now they've seen my Karn. I don't really care about that, because it was just coming next turn anyway. Draw your cards. Lightning Bolt. Do I want to stop Psy? It's a pretty high cost, too, because I, I don't get to start the Construct stream. I think I'm going to give my opponent one more card. I, I think I just need to get this going. Alright, rough. I mean, we got a Psy for it. I'm very happy that that isn't in play. If I draw a land, I can play Karn plus a Lightning Bolt this turn. I'm good with that. All right, yeah, do your do your thing. Yeah, I am I am glad that Thopters are not being made as this process continues, though. Like, I'm good with these things just, like, repeatedly cycling. It's when my opponent builds up a board presence before I have Karn Constructs in play that uh, I'm a little scared. Okay. I have lost the ability to remove Emery. It's a little saddening. Uh, such is life. Alright. Does this one resolve? Good. So, I get a 4-4, and the next turn I minus and turn it into a 5-5. Five, five. I have three dead cards in hand due to Chalice, and I can't take that thing out of play ever. Meltdown one-sided. Yeah, so that does, that does not trigger... Um, due to my Torpor Orb. Ooh, is my opponent not going to play Bobbles here? Okay, no, they are going to play Bobbles. They, they were fishing for something else, though. Like, maybe a Thought Monitor that doesn't draw them cards. Torpor Orb, putting in some work here. Absolutely love it. Yeah, you can, you can draw some bonus cards, that's fine. Alright. Just minus. I think just minus. Play a land. Crash in for five. My opponent just takes it. I will I will let them kill my Karn. And then just try to kill them with these two constructs. They're just gonna get bigger. Ooh, I don't like that. That is a problem. Because it represents chump blockers. Yeah, if Meltdown is one-sided and only affects my opponents and isn't just all artifacts, I, I want to be playing that card. Alright, goodbye Karn. Alright, and now they're going to play one more Bobble, and I assume they'll immediately sacrifice it to uh, just keep the cards flowing. I need like a big Eater of Days or something, because that has Trample. Uh, I mean, Great Furnace is a thing. Um, my, my opponent here is just going to make Thopters faster than I can kill them. Like, at two spells a turn, they have advantage. And they also can, like, sacrifice um, some random artifacts with Psy to draw cards. And get more Thopters if things start looking dicey. If the Shadow Spear was still in my deck, I could have the out of, like, playing Urza Saga and trampling over it. Um, yeah, this deck is quite bad versus Chalice. Uh, which is weird, because I have so many, like, 4-drops and so many things that kind of, like, dodge it in the first place. And I have to keep attacking. If I just hold back, I'm just going to get pecked to death by flyers anyway. Uh, I think I'm basically deterministically dead here. I am going to continue playing this one out because I have Final Fortune to draw towards. I think outside of that, I'm dead. Okay, yeah, my opponent uh, double blocked and then sacrificed, drew some extra cards with Psy. Just, just gross. I guess if I draw an Eater of Days... Things get 
interesting for me, right? Because then I can block flyers. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm taking a lot of so now. Oh, okay, yeah. So my opponent is now gonna activate Emery. They'll draw another card. Have two Thopters in play. Yeah, I I need a Final Fortune effect, and that will potentially win me the game. Not guaranteed though. My opponent like block blocks and then I could take an extra turn. I would need to put one more artifact in play. Uh, okay. Um I guess I'm not technically dead here. I just can't attack. I can take five on the crack back in the air. Um this is cruel though. Oh my opponent's got <laughs> oh god my opponent's echoing truth. Alright. Yeah that's fair. Um do I want something else to stop Emery? Some of these artifacts become a little more appealing on the play. Um, but I don't really know that I do. Again, I do really wish I had some artifact destruction. Uh, this is a turn to 9-8 creature. I'll absolutely keep this. It flies too, so... And, and it also tramples, so... Like, the Thopters aren't dealing with it innately. I, uh, I like how this hand is shaping up. I can't Lightning Bolt an Emery on turn one. But I can Lightning Bolt an Emery on turn two after playing an Eater of Days. It will be soft to a Force of Will, though. Um, again, we're, we're, we're playing the janky fun deck. Um, sometimes you lose to a piece of Disruption. It is what it is. Actually, I'm not super... The Emery doesn't trigger... I have that going for me, although they have multiple bobbles, which I assume they're just going to cash in immediately. Yep, they are cashing them in immediately. So now it's just going to be, do you have Force of Will plus blue card in one of your six cards? It cannot be a Force of Negation. It has to be a Force of Will. All right. Oh, try not to. Hot damn. All right. So um, I will attempt a 9-8. It resolves. Okay, so now the question is, do I play Phyrexian Dreadnought or do I Lightning Bolt Emery? I think I just play the second creature. Because this just represents lethal next turn. And both of these things trample. Alright. What you got? You can use Emery to turn on Metalcraft for Mox Opal, but then where do you go from there? And I will just play my stuff again if you... Do something like an Echoing Truth and just bounce one of these critters. Gotta be like Psy. Yeah. Psy is reasonable. I don't know that it's enough, honestly, though. I have 21 damage. Okay. Um. Yeah. We'll see how my opponent blocks. And, um. I assume they have to throw quite a bit in front of the boss here. That's fine. This brings my opponent to three. Now, why is that a, an important number, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you. Because of Lightning Bolt. All right, and that is the match. We end up 2-3 in the league. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list. A little janky around the edges, but not bad. Sundial of the Infinite was not amazing. But it was redundancy for a good plan. So the Sundial a couple of times did get us like a Dreadnought or an Eater of Days or, or something like that. Um, we never just used Final Fortune plus Last Chance as like a legitimate take an extra turn with no downside due to Sundial. Um, but I think that's okay. I am pretty good with the number of those effects that I had in the 75. Like, my first draft had, like, eight of them, and then I was like, no, I, like, they're hard to cast, so I can't have too many of them, which is part of the reason why those things never lined up properly. Honestly, the biggest thing about this deck is that I need answers to Chalice. Like, I kind of expected with a bunch of big threats at a higher CMC and with Urza Saga that I wouldn't be super susceptible to Chalice, um, but, like, after playing the deck, I was very wrong. But kind of as a starting point, I would probably remove two spell skites and then either one of the blasts or one of the pieces of graveyard hate here um, for three answers to artifacts. Um, it could be something like uh, an abrade, could be something like a meltdown if that's one-sided. Again, I don't remember the text off the top of my head. 
um, or something of that general nature. Um, but I think my overall deck building strategy here of use Torpor Orb as redundancy for Sundial and use large artifacts to take advantage of the fact that we otherwise have these kind of like do nothing artifacts was pretty reasonable. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. I really enjoyed playing this one. This one was pretty fun. Um, as far as Ragavan goes, Ragavan was worse this league than I expected it to be, um, but it just kind of did not do its thing a lot of the time. I did not just get to use it as like the Lotus Petal producer that I wanted it to be, um, but I played against a lot of like Chalice decks that were locking me out from casting those in the first place or just had a bunch of disposable bodies, um, but I didn't get like the best uh, showing there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, click the like button. That's the easiest way to support me for free. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for legacy, modern, and vintage content on the regular. Have a great rest of the day, and the deck list and my donation information is available in the video description if you want to try this out or get one of your own decks on the channel. See ya!